Federation. As uh, uh, Reverend Michael said, <clears throat> I've known uh, Reverend Dr. Sharon for many, many years. We used to do a, a lot of INTA, uh, International New Thought Alliance, uh, television broadcast in Los Angeles. And the world is uh, full of uh, surprises. And, uh, you know, we know there are coincidences and all these things that happen, right? They're all coincidences, right? Well, I've got one that happened today because on my, uh, Dr. Sharon sat on my doctoral boards and there were two other ministers who sat on my doctoral boards and they happen to both be present here today. D Dr. Samantha, who was also in my ministerial class with Dr. Tom Johnson. Another, co another kind of irony, by the way, is that, that had, I think we had 19 people in that class. And in that class, Dr. Tom asked, how many people intended to be ministers and 18 hands went up. Guess whose hand didn't go up? You're looking at him. <laughs> and the other person on my board was Dr. Bill Rideout, who's also present here today. I love irony and paradox. It's, it kind of puts a little pizzazz in the, in the menu and uh, kind of keeps us fresh. I know many of us who got into New Thought uh, teaching uh, kind of came here came here from different venues. I know I got here from a, via a postgraduate, uh, well, I call it a postgraduate overdose of Roman Catholicism. But I didn't, I, I, uh, I left that not with any kind, never had any sense of animosity, never had any of the bad experiences that you hear about today all the time. <clears throat> None of those did I even hear about in my experience. Uh, in fact, I carry that as not only part of my history, but part of the treasure that got me here today because there are no accidents and everything that's happened in any one of our lives was not an accident. It was part of our own unfoldment. And that's a blessing. And boy, it sure helps you when you just went through something that was so unfair, so unreasonable, and you were treated so badly that you can at least look at it and say, I don't get it now, but I know somewhere, somewhere in this mix there was a reason for this. Uh, the one thing about new thought that I really enjoy a lot is the beauty of it is that we build upon whatever we're led to. There is no dogma. There is nothing that restricts us and restricts our belief and restricts the, it restricts the avenues of investigation that we might proceed on. All of it's open to us. So it's a carte blanche. We are not at effect. We are at cause. And that is our God-given right. Now, how do you get to such a bold statement as that? Our God-given right is to be a cause and not effect. Well, in the tr in the Christian tradition, what do they talk? What's it talk about? That's the tradition, either that or Judaism, are the two major venues <clears throat> that most of us in this country come from. And when the, when you read it, the Bible opens up with what? The beginning. In the beginning, one mind, one God. That's what it talks about one mind, one God. That is the creative force. There was nothing except the one mind, the one God. Everything that followed from that was what? Creation from the one mind, the one God. Everything each and every person in this room does today is creative in nature. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that because Dr. Sharon, I guess having a sense of humor, she uh, she gave me a topic of <clears throat> of, uh, of uh, uh, create uh, creating miracles. Well, wow! And, uh, in my in my Catholic days, I would have thought, "Oh my God, spare me!" That's <laughs> what is this? Where's Peter Pan? Uh, but the truth is, when you think about this, this is exactly what goes on. And I'll get into this in a little in a little while. But the fact of the matter is that because of this original creation uh, from which we flow, that is the source and the power upon which we rely. And we don't need to have any doubts about those that might have adverse statements to make about it. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. The one thing I know about it, though, is that none of us get out of here dead. We're moving on, folks. So there is no, there is no escaping the reality that we are a part of the creative force. Dr. Holmes in, in Science of Mind, the, the founder of Science of Mind, said that there is a power in the universe, a power for good. And that is a power upon which we can draw in our own lives. 
so that we do not become the effect of what's going on around us, but always the creator of it. And everything that's going on in our life, even if we choose to be the victim or be the recipient of somebody else's power, that's a choice, that's a lesson in our eternal journey. Because this is an eternal journey. And that's kind of neat in a way. So, you know, forget the hell stuff. You're not even getting that. You're not even going to get that. There's a continuum. There's a continuum and each of us is in charge of where that goes. It's not being forced upon us. This is the freest kind of teaching you could ever find. We can take with it and do with it as we want. Because why? We start with a basic premise that mind creates. If mind creates each of us having a mind, each of us being a product of the creative force, which is God, or whatever term you want to use it. The, the, the nomenclature is irrelevant. In fact, sometimes I think some of the religious terminology scares a lot of people off from, from what? From truth. Because we're all truth seekers. That's all we're looking for is the truth. We want to know the right thing and do the right thing, and we want to know where we fit into this equation. And because of the journey that we've had so far, we're at different places. And each is good, by the way. Each is good, each is wonderful, each is an experience which will serve us and hopefully serve others. Because being, being of service ends up, I, I remember when I was a little less mature on a lot of levels, <clears throat> I was fine, I liked people, I liked to help them and all that stuff, but, and I didn't say anything about it, but I always kind of wondered where's the payoff. And I made a lot of mistakes doing that, and I think most of us did. Uh, I went for power, property, and prestige in terms of credentials and all that stuff. I thought the credentials would make me. The credentials are irrelevant. I'm glad I've got them. They have helped me now, but they didn't help me when I thought they were so valuable. Why? My motivation was wrong. My analysis of what it really was was inaccurate. Because it's all about unity with God and God consciousness. That's all it's about. So the rest of this stuff is just fro frosting on the cake and sometimes it's not even frosting. It looks like frosting to somebody else. It's your own, it's your own, it's your own present hell. Why? Because it's all what's going on etern internally that makes any of this stuff count. One of the uh, the thing I like about New Thought teaching too is it, it doesn't have any dogma. Dogma. It's about what? It's not about dogma. It's about principles. Principles. Principles have an eternality to them. Dogma doesn't really. It might involve principles, but one of the one of the uh, one of the, uh, the difficulties that many churches have is it's more of a control mechanism than a mechanism to really. Although its intentions are good, I don't question the intentions of any of these religions. But we got to look at what some of the outcome is. We are we are free of all that in New Thought. We are free to expand and see and, as we wish. And in doing that comes what responsibility. There's no pass in the buck, folks. Here it is, right here. And can I take a day off? Yeah, I can take a day off, by the way. You know, I can kick back. I can even make mistakes through actions I knew weren't so cool in the first place. And then I get a chance to look at them. What did I learn? Because the important thing is, what's the, what's the, what's the lesson? What did I learn here? Quite frankly, before I ever got on this stage, you heard a complete lesson. If you listened to everything that was said. So what's, what's another thing that I've learned from that? Pay attention. Pay attention. There's a lesson in almost everything. Almost everything you see out there has a lesson in it, if you choose to get it. Now, I'm also real cool about taking the day off. I like to take the day off, and uh, when I do, that's fine. I think we were not born as part of the create as part of the creative force to be miserable. Creative force isn't miserable. If we're if we're a if we are a part and portion of that, we're not designed to be miserable either. It has to do with our own selfishness, self centeredness and erroneous thinking that that comes about. Now you don't have to be selfish, self centered or have erroneous thinking to end up being a millionaire if that's what you want. Why? Because mind creates. I mean, create miracles, doesn't that sound a little bit 
Peter Pan is sort of. How can that be? Well, if you look in the dictionary, it create doesn't mean to make something out of nothing. That isn't creation, is it? Really? To create is to cause by mental action. That's right out of the dictionary. Create by mental action, not pull it out of the ethers. Create by mental action. And in this in this teaching, which is very closely aligned, I know all the most of the ministers in it, that the background is very much science of mind, and we know that mind creates, just like uh, what what happened in the, in the in the biblical thing too. The Christian the churches have taken a little different direction, but it was God's creation created from what from mind because there was nothing. Go back before the Big Bang and all that when nothing was there. Yes, there was something there. The idea. The idea which is God. The creativeness that is God. So all of it's been here. And as we have an opportunity as that individualized expression of the God consciousness to do whatever we choose in life, we have the opportunity not only to know that we certain things come to, with us. Have you ever seen that certain things go on in your life that just seem to have been there forever, even though you've been educated maybe to the contrary or all these things to overcome it? Well, we don't know on this level of expression at this time in our lives exactly what went before, nor do we know exactly what's going to come after, but we know it's all good. Why? Because it's connected with the source, which is God. With God, all things are possible. And with God, we cannot be harmed in any meaningful way. All we can do is learn some damn tough lessons. And we probably will, even when we're trying very carefully not to. A lot of the things we fear uh, are totally specious. In fact, most of them. I'm not suggesting we don't need to be pretty cautious in what we do. Take a look. What did I say before? Pay attention. If you're paying attention, you'll get the message you need to get. One thing, in fact, Dr. Sharon told me she even used this. I, when I, uh, I've taught law, among other things. I've got many incarnations. I was a Marine officer, and I was a big law firm and taught law. and other. I've done many different things. So, uh, so I'm just beginning. I just want to know what the next lesson is. But my students, when I was teaching, would always ask me, Professor Beaver, what's the rule? What's the rule? Always wanted to know the rule. Well, they don't call practicing law and practicing medicine, practicing for, for no reason. It's still unfolding. It's always defend, de, unfolding depending upon the circumstances of the situation. It depends upon the situation. So there are two rules you must never forget. Now, forgive me if Sharon told you this last week. The first rule is it depends. Well, of course it depends. There are all kinds of circumstances surrounding a situation. It doesn't mean the law isn't universal and clear and without exception. It doesn't mean that at all. It means that circumstances color exactly how that law applies. The first rule is it depends. The second rule is, but not always. There's sometimes when there are, there's no exception. There are certain universal truths. There is no exception. You can make the exception, but if you do, you pay the consequence why you violated the rules. The laws are not, the, the universal laws are not there to regulate us or control us. They're there simply to help us unfold. It's simply an opportunity to unfold. So one thing we get to do today is to see things in a positive light. Positive light doesn't, I mean, I, anybody looked at my background and said I'm Pollyanna would be, you know, out of their minds. But you know what, even without, before I got into this teaching, I had a certain positive point of view about things. Because um, as a man thinketh, you've heard that how many times? So he is. First becomes the thought, then becomes the thing. It all begins where? In mind. Even the creative process, both on, the, on, a, on a much broader scale and on our individual scale. And the scale that we most have to deal with is our individual scale. That's where we have some kind of say and control in it. I mean, I'm not here. I'm here to help anybody I can help, but I can't make a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. You put the message out. Sometimes you do it repeatedly. Some, with certain people, you do it one way, with others another. Why do you do that? It's your perception. I think there is an inner knowing. I know when I got here, everything I'd done in life had been pretty much left brain. 
And yet the truth was when I got here, I'm mostly right-brained. I'm mostly right-brained. I'm mostly intuitive and spiritual, although I don't always look that way because I've got that training that goes back. Uh, uh, I'm one of the older people in here, believe it or not, uh, except for this gentleman right here, <laughs> Dr. Henry LePew, who's got me by 10 years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you'd never know it. Take a look at him when he walks out. Uh, it's just a matter of unfoldment. Here's the other thing about it. You, you listen to this stuff, and if you listen to everything I've said, boy, you can get kind of confused in a way. Say, oh, my God, what's he talking about? And is there no end to it? There doesn't need to be an end to it. There is no end to anything. It's now. Everything is now, and then it's gone. So it doesn't happen. What happened yesterday is, on one level, it may be a lesson to us, but it's not where you live. You don't live with what happened yesterday. We've got an eternity of possibilities. And to the extent it isn't working, what do you do just like we do here in, on this, this good foible, planet full of foibles? We just do something different because we're trying to do the right thing. And what we find is that, there, that when we support the connectiveness that exists, one of the great errors, I think, among, among us on this planet is we, we have this sense of separation. All the differences you can point out do not mean we're separate. do not mean that at all. In fact, quite the contrary is the, is the truth. Judge not by appearances. Appearances don't rule the day. It's trappings. They're trappings. Now, having said that, there's something useful that can be done with everything that happens and something useful that can be done with everything I observe and everything you observe. Uh, I'm getting the, oh my God, I'm so close to the end here. I've talked too long, but one thing I'm going to say on this thing with uh, uh, create miracles. We create miracles by taking mental action. We decide. An idea held steadily in mind draws to itself those things necessary for its fulfillment. An idea, that's what creates steadily in mind, draws to itself those things necessary for its fulfillments. Spinoza, a great, great philosopher, in talking about miracles, he said they're events, which they are. Miracles are events, the natural causes of which are too complicated to be understood. You don't need to get upset about that. That's just a fact. And even if they could be understood, it would take you 15 days to explain it so that you get all those facts that go into it, and it's not relevant anymore. So the important thing is just know your own truth. Know which direction you want to go. Work for the good of yourself and others. Is that kind of nebulous? It is. Work on it. Work on it. But do that. You know, the one thing I know in this teaching and in this church in particular, you have the opportunity to let your world unfold in a very positive way for yourself and others. And I'm so fortunate and blessed to be here standing on the same platform that Dr. Sharon stands on many many, many times, and to reinforce again my friendship with her, my connection with you. I know she's connected with you. That makes me connected with you. So begins the lesson.